Afternoon, everybody. How we doing? <laughs> How we doing, everyone? Live again. It's never ending. It's never ending. Benji's banner. <laughs> right. Well, I hope you're doing okay, everybody. Um, it's rather a nice day here, but very cold. Uh, it looks like Mike Atlantis was in first. He's looking forward to seeing the R707. Yeah, it's pretty much there now. It's got a little bit of tweaking, a bit of alignment to do, and then, then we're good to go. Brett, hi Brett. So should be joining in later, hopefully. Derek, Taffman, hi Derek. Theo, hi Theo, Colin Parnell, Marky. Playing with your Spitfire transmitter, I take it. Hi, Time Tech Afternoon, how are you? A little, I don't know what that is. A little waving man. <laughs> uh, looks like a hacker amp for today. George is just pulling me up on the lack of um, slide for today's stream. Uh, R303's back from Paul, Daniel. Harvey De Niro, hi Harvey, how are you? You're only here for the beer at the giveaway. <laughs> You'll have to wait, Harvey. <laughs> you have to watch the whole stream before I tell you, Harvey. Hi, Andrew Ausfer. Chris Brown. Hi, Chris. Driver Driver Films Shortwave. Afternoon to you. Pat Jones. Patronics. Nick. How you doing, Nick? Stephen Devereaux. Uh, drivers found some crystals for his radio. Hopefully you'll have four frequencies to operate on now. What have you got? A PMR radio that you're convert converting driver? Hi Doug. How are you? Phil Taylor, I Phil. Aston, I Aston, how are you? Been repairing the car. Ah. Barry Charney, afternoon Barry. Time tech, I think I did say hello. Derek, yeah, hello. Cyberflyer, how are you doing? Cody's. <laughs> Paul, how are you doing? Cyberflyer, I think I've said hello. Benji's in. Hi, Benji. Andy Beck. Hello, Andy. George. You're not doing a hacker. I can do a hacker if you want, but, you know. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Hi, Dave. How are you doing, mate? Dave Rhodes. It's a bit nippy outside. So yes, we've got some, we've got a couple of giveaways to do today. We've got an update on the R seven oh seven, but also literally one minute ago, I've just come back upstairs from. The local Hermes man who has delivered me a parcel. A rather important parcel, so we all know what I've been waiting for. And I know a lot of people have been asking about it. So um yes, I think I think the Volve Tester Transformer is here. It's here. It is here. So uh, we can have a look at that as well. So the idea today really was to go over what I've done so far with the R707, show you all the bits that I've changed in it. And um, then I was going to um, look at the kits that uh, Derek very kindly sent me. I've also had some information in from Alan over in Ireland, who was... Um, He's a contributor to the channel. He's also um, a keen viewer, although he, he likes to um, lurk in the shadows. He he doesn't um, doesn't come on to chat, but he does watch, which is fine. But he's some um, he sent me in some information on on um, these kits, which is really interesting. And if he hadn't if he hadn't said anything or sent anything in, then um, I wouldn't have had a clue. Um, I would have totally messed up. Probably. 
So some very interesting info, which I'll try and get you in a minute if I can find it out of my email on this computer. Uh, no, that's, that's wrong. No, we don't want to. We don't want the notifications. We want to go into email. So I'll download those links in a minute, and we'll have a look at that. So Alan's very kindly uh, gone to the trouble of uh, sending me all that info in. Yeah, a lot of lot of stuff, and we'll get to that in a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. So that's the plan, Stan. That is the plan. So yeah, the um, R seven hundred seven has been a bit of a journey, to be honest. Let me just uh, get rid of some of these things that are not relevant. Okay, right. As you were. Quick, put it into quarantine. <laughs> Hi, Harish. Red Mercury use. Let's get rid of you. Uh, there we go. So uh, it's a Uniden twenty thirty two meter FM transceiver. Not heard of one of those drivers, so I assume you just get your different channels by plugging uh, crystals in for each channel. Yeah. 17 degrees and sunny in New York today, Doug. Very nice. Yes, it is. I still got mine in in, in uh, Fahrenheit. It says 71 here, but it is pretty cold. I beat you to it, Paul, did I? <laughs> no worries, mate. So, yeah, it looks like... Uh, oh, did I, did I miss... Uh, I, did I say hello to Clive? Hi, Clive, how are you? Just made it in. No rush. Old radio, the Uniden, is it? Ne never heard of that one, George. Obviously, I've heard of Uniden. Um, well, I, know, I know Uniden back back in the sort of early 80s and well, before the 80s as uh, CB radio manufacturers. So shall we have a look at the um, R707? Let's have a start with that one, shall we? Because I know that the owner... Uh, it's keen to see how I've got on with it. So let's um, pop that on. So there is pretty much back together. It's not fully back together yet because um, it was back together. You can see we've got some batteries in it. But um, I noticed when I, I screwed the back door back in, I had to, had to put another screw in there because I'd screw loose. No comments. And um, this back door promptly dropped off on one side. And um, what I've had to do is jam... There's already some bits of matchstick jammed in there, but I've had to jam some more um, timber in there. I've just used cocktail sticks, and I've actually put some um, PVA glue in there now to set that hard. So uh, I'll leave that to go off properly hard overnight, and uh, I'll screw the back door back on tomorrow. So that's why it's got no back door at the moment. But um, it's all done, <laughs> pretty much, apart from it needs a little bit of alignment still, I think. Um, to, to be honest, the, the um, shortwave alignment on this has been a pain in the neck. It's been a real pain, the shortwave alignment, and I don't know why. I can't seem to spread the alignment out. If you follow the instructions as per um, Roberts, it just doesn't work, because you, you, you align one end of the scale using uh, two of the transformers. Now, you start off and use two of the capacitors to align the higher end of the um, of the scale, up about 7.2 megs. 
Then uh, you move to a couple uh, transformers with iron cores in them to do the lower frequency, about six and a half, mate. No, about six, 5.95, something like that. And uh, you do that and it, it pulls the other one. So you go back and you do the other one, it pull, pulls it. So it's not, it's not spreading out for some reason. I can't really get my head around that. It is receiving now. I have had to do a lot of alignment on this radio. It's been um, it's been screwdriver to hell, to be honest. Um, even had to tweak the IF in the module just to get um, get AM a bit better. I've not touched FM. I daren't touch that. But uh, there is some more adjustments that I've got to do underneath here, just to trim the oscillator and aerial for medium wave and long wave. But um, apart from that. I'm pretty much good to go. So let's pop it on. Start with the uh, FM. You could do with a new aerial, to be honest. It's the aerial's not very good at all. Preparations are underway for the opening any novel i've read since that matched the sheer rhetorical power of this one one of the things about the r707 is you've got a lot of tone range on it and um, they're really over over the top the bass and the treble the more friendless the more unsustained i am the more i will you respect really myself get it rattling with the bass the word more rings out and emphatically treble. throughout that famous declaration as does the word i as fine an example of anaphora as you might find in the speeches of Winston Churchill Very or big Martin Luther King Jr. To quote back to them, and under those, um, any material change. Hundred musicians from the BBC's orchestras, and somehow they're all on one song. The chariots of fire there. Oh well, do you know what trail finders have come out in an, in a investigation by which is one of the best companies in. So let's switch to medium wave. I've got a lot of things turned off today to try and get a bit of reception in here, so I've probably turned off all the wrong things. That's bad. And this has come up really well since I trimmed the IF cores. So there's loads of stuff interfering there, it's the computer and everything, but. Yeah, computer's wiping it right out now. Long wave. Power of woman's anger. More anger that forges the novel's most symbolic link. Not, I would argue, between Jane and Rochester, but... It's picking up RTE as well. Well, not in here, it isn't, but... Um... No. I've had this out outdoors lunchtime just to test it and um, it is performing really well now it was pretty bad it was very bad Let's see if we can get anything on shortwave I don't think we will now I've got the computers on I said I turned all the computers off earlier but um, I even got a really strange station on shortwave that I never even knew existed Someone like Malalia Sasa. 
Hybrid Classics available on BBC Sounds. There'll be more inspirational introductions here on Open Book and on Front Row over the coming weeks. That's a long way. You're listening to Open Book. That's a long way. That's right, short way. Lots of rubbish. nothing on shortwave whatever is on shortwave is getting wiped out by the computers in here but yeah let me just um see if anybody knows about this missing radio one yeah it's not faulty that's that's correct george we don't want radio one <laughs> um i wonder if i've kept hold of that um What the hell was it called? I think it was something like laser sound, something like that. Um, that's, cr that's crazy because I had it on my um, phone here earlier. I know what I did. I've. Um, On the overwritten written it was something, but yeah, it's a shortwave station that does some. Um, it does sort of. I don't know what to describe it. It's, it's mainstream sounds, but it's on somewhere around about six point two six two oh five. I think it is. Um, I think it's laser sound, something like that. Or shortwave sound. I can't see it again now, Carl. Uh, I wonder if it's got it on my search history. Ah, laser hot hits, that's it. <laughs> Now I didn't even know this channel existed until just just a minute ago when I was tuning this radio on shortwave and I, I stumbled upon this channel and sure enough it was pretty much bang on on the scale. And uh, has anybody heard of this? Just get rid of my um, picture in picture. Hopefully uh, no. We need to be on screen. Anybody ever heard of this before? Laser Hot Hits International, the shortwave legend. So it's basically, um, it, it sounds like a UK station that broadcasts on shortwave. And it's obviously available online as well, look. So it's got some high quality audio stream. Listen now. Uh, let's turn my volume up. High quality stereo. Well, that was high quality stereo. This is mobile one. So about the noise. Um, but yeah, they broadcast on six two o five shortwave. Look. 
Software defined radio in the Netherlands. I don't know whether they're a Netherlands station. Let's look at the history. So it's been going since 1990 on FM. See, I've never heard of these people before, but they've been going, look, since 1994 on 6220 kilohertz. So now they're broadcasting on 6205 kilohertz. <sighs> Never heard of them before, but um, I can just about get them on this. In fact, it sounded better on this radio than it did on my um, my Texan radio. But um, we'll have a go in a second, see if I can pick it up on Texan radio. So has anybody ever heard of this before? be interested to see uh, if anyone has. Get back to my um <laughs> I'm not surprised, Paul. Is it laser hot hits? Yeah. Yeah, so some somebody hello Mr. Laser Sound, how are you? <laughs> Does this have anything to do with you, Mr. Laser Sound? Radio Bilge? <laughs> Hi there, Brett. Hi, Andrew. Andrew, I swear, I, did not, I probably said hello, Andrew, but I'm saying it again just in case I missed you, mate. Racing Demon, how are you, mate? Evening, Mike. Afternoon, Mike, even. Channel 292, you can buy airtime and have your own show. <laughs> really? Laser 558 with the offshore pirate station in the 80s. You wish it was yours, Mr. Laser Sound. Yeah. Let's um let's get my um Texan PLA eight eighty out. So I did actually manage to pick this up, um so I've got it on six two oh five there. Let's just plug the external area in. See if I can hear it. Certainly heard it really well earlier. Oh, it's not there now. Yeah, nothing heard with that aerial. Let's try the Sony just in case. Never know. I keep forgetting to turn this off, so I've probably got no batteries in this thing. No. Well, that's a bit of info for you. Anyway, I don't know if anybody is able to pick that up. Are the Texans very good? Yes, they are very good, Brett. Yeah, that's my PL880. I gave it a little dink uh, a while ago in the 
grill, which I was a bit annoyed about. But um, yeah, really nice shortwave uh, radio, Brat. If you're, if you're after one, um, I recommended this to Sean. He picked one up and really loves it. Though he did, he did think about getting rid of it. But um, yeah, it's real nice, handy size. It comes with a like a wire aerial as well. It comes with like a wire aerial. You plug in the side. Uh, it, it does SSB. It's got, um, I think it's got synchronous detection on it, uh, but you've got to go th into like a service menu to get it. Um, I've never tried it, so I don't think it needs it, to be fair. It does receive really well. So, yeah, good bit of kit. Comes in a nice padded case, which I've just um, lost there. Comes in a nice padded case. It comes with a little map and... The only thing I've had to do with mine is replace the um, battery. But uh, it's an 18650 lithium battery and I left it discharged for too long and um, I couldn't get it back. So, Yes, it's a Texan PL880, that is. Hi, Michael Hyde, how are you? I think the... The Texan PO680 is quite highly regarded as well. Anyway, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm deviating already, and I I am I'm not I'm going to be on for a bit shorter today. I'm going to be finishing at half five today, people. So uh, I haven't got a massive amount of time today. So I'm going to um, pop you on, and we'll have a look at some of the stuff that I've done. Well, actually, what I'll do first of all is I'll um. I'll just get you down and show you everything that I've replaced in this uh, this R707. If I can find a little pot of bits for it. We're done with them. Right back there. <laughs> a lot of bits. Just darken that down a bit. It's a bit bright. Bit more. Oh, too much, too much. So um, yeah, I've had to replace a lot of bits in this. It's been um, pretty twiddled to death, to be fair. Um, the module's been done. Um, so stuff that was in the module was these little um. Plastic covered caps. I don't know why they cover them. Covered them in little blue plastic. I don't know. So there's five of those in the module. There's another one. Ran off somewhere. I oh, know one. One didn't ever cover on. It's a little two and a half micro that has not got cover on it. Which is that one there? So those five were in the module, and obviously we had three of the beloved AF transistors. We've got one AF116 and two AF115s. I did say to Victor I'd um, test those for shorts because the module wasn't working on um, AM at all until I uh, refurbed it. Recap of the main board. I think you saw that last time. I think we did a recap on, on the main board. So that was all the caps from the main board. <laughs> a lot of caps. So it's quite capacitor heavy, this radio. I think we tested all the caps, didn't we, on Sunday? So we haven't tested the ones in the module, though, so we can do that. So next thing was... was um, I don't know if you can remember, but the AM, oh, which, which what camera am I on? The AM um, aerial coil had come off and all the wires were snapped off on it. Um, all the contacts were broken on it as well. I managed to get that back together and I'll show you some pictures on that in a minute. But um, after I got that back together, um, I was obviously expecting it to work, and it, and it didn't work. And uh, the reason was this. 
This is the long wave oscill oscillator um, coil. And um, again, it's been screwdrivered and it's, I mean, if you look inside, there's just nothing. It's just black mush in there. And it, it's it basically it, the core is broken to pieces. And I don't know whether someone's put some oil or, or something greasy in it. But um, I took it out and tried to unscrew it from the back, and all that came came off off of it was just a little tiny piece that was left. All the rest has gone to dust. So I've had to pinch one of those out of a, a spares radio. Um, then uh, I, I still had problems, and it, it had this weird thing. Whereas when I turned up the volume, it was um, showing as a a short and it was cutting out on the um, current limiting on my um, power supply so i uh, i couldn't work at that out i mean i went through the whole circuit um the whole of the amplifier circuit trying to work out what was happening and like there was one there was one transistor that was um that was showing was measuring weird it, it was measuring too low when i um Went through all the voltage measurements on it, and that was this one, little lock fit, DC one five eight, I believe. Or was it one one four eight? I don't know. I had to, I changed two because I actually popped one myself, so um, I changed two. And uh, the reason was is the bias resistor was way out of spec. That one, I think it was supposed to be forty forty four k, and it was reading I think fifty seven k. And that was uh, pulling the voltage down, so I changed that, and lo and behold, my voltage came back up. But um, it still didn't work. And and the the actual issue was the um, headphone socket. The wiring is different between the newer and the later models. And again, I'll show you that in a minute. So I changed a couple. That I've went fast. I've changed three of the bias resistors to get that voltage right. Um, then I went in and. All the rubber grommets that were in the FM section on the FM tuner are all, I mean, they're absolutely perished. Look, they're just crumbling to dust. Yuck. So I've had to change those as well. The, uh, <laughs> the washer that was in underneath the bottom of the aerial, that was in pieces, so I've changed that. I've added one new screw in because I want enough screws to put the hinges on. So that's that. So that's the hinges. Um, those of you that know the um, R707 and know that this is the battery contacts for the springy, I think it's P996 is it batteries. Basically six volt lantern batteries. But I was looking at this and it was like really corroded. So I thought, obviously it sits in like a piece of metal in underneath the radio. You can see the green there. What I put um, I put vinegar on this and it did absolutely nothing. It just would not move it at all. You can see how green it is there. Verdigris. It's verdigris. So uh, I thought, well, it looked a bit ropey on the other side as well. I thought, this looks a bit strange. There's a, a bit broken off the corner here. So I had to look in behind, and um, it's been glued. I don't know what sort of glue. It's all bubbly. It might be some sort of epoxy. I don't know. But basically, if you look, the whole, whole of this board is split all the way down through there. So I, um, I pulled that out, and I pulled another one out. Of another spare set and um there we are replaced so um as i say i've been messing about with the alignment trying to get it right so let's get back to my um let's get back to my what's going on here let's get back to my screen and i'll show you reflow the battery contacts I've done all that some um, poor i've got some new uh, <laughs> I've taken them out the back and um, wire walled them and tinned the areas where the the um, cables connect. I'll get that out then. Okay, so let's um, 
Let's rewind back, so... So this is the module as it was. As you can see, we've got these four plastic coated caps in there and one non-plastic coat. I don't know why. And if you take the caps off of these, these are just silver aluminium electrolytics with the um, negative wire bent very tightly down the side. I mean, there's plenty of clearance inside, so I don't know why I did that, but maybe there was a reason. I don't know. You can see I've got AF115 and two, two 115s and a 116, so they've all been changed. I also say I did tweak the um, I did tweak the IF on this as well. Um, so well, the AM, I've not touched the FM IF. So the AM IF is um, these two here and this one. Don't touch that one, that's the detector up there. But yeah, I've just trimmed these for, for maximum signal, really. And the yellow ones are um, FM, IF, so I've not touched that. I think the FM discriminators over, over there. So that was that. Um, for some reason, when I took the module out, it looks like someone's put solder around there. Well, it is. There is solder around there and flux. So it looks like someone's had a soldering iron down through that hole from the back for some reason. Um, and that was that was the board. So basically concertina that. Let me just get rid of my picture in picture. Let's grab a drink while I'm here. Just water. So I've left this row of wires connected and I've just um, desoldered the other two corners bent the tabs over because this is an earlier set the later sets have got a screw and a spacer in here but the early sets have just got these tabs that you've got to bend over pulled it back and you can see the the module wire sticking up here and over here i think i'm going backwards in time now bizarre i'll have to um has it been going for a while just since i started playing the videos all right it might be it's getting feedback then from the um from the video let me switch screens and see if it... stop now is it i think it's the videos then feeding back all right cheers paul no worries cheers
yeah, Paul just rung me there. Apparently got some sort of weird feedback coming through it. Um, hopefully that's clear now. I think it was just feeding back um, when I was playing those videos. So that that one looked like it survived, but this one's gone to mush. So I've changed all of them. That's the other one. There's, th there's only three in there. So that's brand new um, grommets now. So this was the... Um, the long wave coil as you can see i've only got one out of the three tabs left in it still there's two wires broken off there and there's another one you can just see the end of there broken off and you can see the tabs they're still on the wires that one there and this one here bit of a state so basically got some super glue dribbled it in and I've put a cable tie in there to um, hold it in place while it's set it set then um, it was a case of getting the microscope out and um, trying to reattach those wires you can see mrs. cruncher's uh, nail varnish strengthener there which um, which I used to just seal seal the wires up again and give them a bit more strength so there's my handiwork all back in you can see I've uh, rejoined these two wires to that tab and this wire to this one see that is pretty small it's blown up quite a bit and uh, oh yeah, this is just showing the base of that coil the um, long wave oscillator coil that I took out with the uh, well, transformer with the ferrite in the in the middle there's a picture of it and that's the only bit that survived and you can see there's little bits of black ferrite core just crumbled inside it that's another video so i won't play that but this um this is the strange thing and this caught me out and i, I don't know whether i wired this up wrong or it was originally wired wrong so this is um one of the sets let's just go back um now, well, let me do them side by side. Can you see the two pictures? Let's just get rid of me. Am I, am I picture in picture still? No, I'm not. So look at these two pictures. The two diagonals. This is a later set. And this is the early set. And I've redone the wiring on this now. So you can see this different. The orange wire still connects to the right hand terminal. The red wire connects to the center terminal of the newer style and it connects to the left hand terminal of the older style. That's because there's two totally different headphone sockets in them. They look the same, they are different. So, this one, the switch is between these two contacts, the red and the orange here, and this is the um, ground connection. And on this one, the switch is between the red and orange but uh, opposite sides. Of course i had i had this headphone socket wired the same as this one so of course my my signal was going straight to ground that's why i could just about hear it and as you turned it up it was it was shorting so uh, i have put a new headphone socket in it i mean this one looks a little bit burnt but it's a damn sight better than the one that was in there one that was in there was burnt to pieces so i think someone's had that one out a few times the next Next photo is with the front grill off of the radio because I went to put the replacement speaker in. I did mean to say I've replaced the speaker as well. And uh, this is one of the screws that holds the speaker in. And this was just turning round and round and round. I just couldn't get any grip on it at all to do it up. And again, it, it looks like it's been screwdriver to hell. I couldn't get a screwdriver to grip on it because it's just been chewed right up. So... Uh, out came the epoxy, a couple extra washers for in behind, and um, glued it in. And I've just put a bit of glue around the other one as well, just in case that one gets um, gets worked free over time. That's another video, so we won't play video because it, look, it's okay. Well, it's all done. So I'm start off with. I think the videos are um, making my sound go crazy. So, so there you are. 
the saga of the R707 now complete. It just needs a little bit of um, tweaking just to make sure the alignment's bang on. I don't know what that noise was, so apologies about that. Just get back through through the chat, see what I've missed. I think Jess is in. Hi, Jess, how are you? The old electrolytics of the giveaway. <laughs> yeah, this is a, a customer's... Um, a customer's uh, radio, don't forget. Hey, you're welcome, Jess. Yeah, I, t I never knew that existed, and it is something to look out for on shortwave. I haven't got my um, ICOM connected up at the moment, so I can't ever listen to it on that. But yeah, apologies for the noise. I'm just going through the uh, noise situation. Apologies for that, everybody. <laughs> oh. Yeah, time tech. The output was. It wasn't a full short. I don't know. It. It. Um. I had it current limited at about um. Three hundred milliamps. Uh, I think it was. Yeah, it certainly is happier. <laughs> sorry about the sorry about the hearing issues, people. Anyway, that's that's a story on the R seven oh seven. It's um it's nearly done. Um the only alignment really I've got to have a quick look at is um where is it? Uh, yeah, the AM oscillator and aerial trimmer. Just to get the um, RF alignment done on, on medium wave and long wave, that's all. I've done long wave, actually. I've just got to do the medium medium wave alignment and then it's it's finished. I can't, like I say, I can't get the um, short wave how I want it because I I don't know this just just doesn't seem possible <laughs> doesn't seem possible so that's that so let's put that one to one side shall we have a look at what's come in from Ed Let's have a little look see. Ooh. Sounds like the kids are out next door again. They always seem to come out when I do a live stream, don't they? Oh dear. Right. So I'm sure you all remember the um Valve tester that was very kindly sent in to me by Resonator all the way from the US of A. So we converted it across to um, 240 volts and it didn't work. Um, it would work on the American. I think, was it 110? Oh, I threw something there, or was that just some. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's very, very kindly done me some instructions as to what's what. Okay. This is going to confuse the hell out of me putting this back together. Let's have a look what um, 
what he's done. So very nicely packed, look. So it's a box in a box with um, polystyrene around it. So thank you, Ed, if you're watching. No, Ed was a recommendation from Andrew Alsfer, actually. And, uh, I contacted Ed through the um, UK Vintage Radio Forum. So let's go over that one picture and picture. So uh, I don't know whether I should put this back in live, but um, I shall certainly take lots of pictures and show you uh, what I've done with it. Okay, that's my my switch assembly, filament switch. Be careful that I don't knock any of these little <laughs> little markings off. Look. Whoa, that must have taken a fair bit of doing that. <laughs> That's scary. Just before that that was connected before <laughs> so shim I've got to reconnect all of these to this switch That's going to take some doing, isn't it? Oh, no! No! So Ed did say he'd managed to keep the belly band in, which he has. So all the... Um, all the windings there are all connected back onto the original. He had to make a new former for it, he said. I'm getting a bit closer. Let's give him a good... Good look at this. So he's kept the same belly band in on it. That must have been a job. It weighs it weighs a ton. He thinks that the um originally the 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 winding had been damaged by the cores cutting into it, I think he said. That's a complex bit of kit, isn't it? So, 5Y3HTQ. Red leads. Four leads plus C7. It's 50 volt, 117 volt, zero. That's gonna that's gonna take me a long time to sort that out. So twenty five volts, seventeen volt, and twenty volt. So we've got um, different voltages coming out of this winding. But very kindly, Ed has marked the voltages on each one. So I'm going to have to get the um, manual out and try, try and work all this out. So we've got blue and brown together there. Mains 180 volt. So 
5y3 meter, I suppose that is. That's the rectifier then, possibly. Well, <laughs> until I get the, the unit out and get the schematic out, I'm a bit lost as to how all that goes back together. But I'm assuming that um, all of these wires have got to be taken off and soldered onto the new transformer. <laughs> Food bill. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Food bill? Oh, so I've got to rewire that by the looks of it. Oh dear. 5 volt, 12.6, 101. He's very kindly marked all of these for me. He did say something about the phasing of it might be, um, might be an issue. So I really don't know what some, what all that's about. So loads of different voltages on these. I think he sort of tried to keep it the same colours as the originals, I think. So first tap. Hmm. There you are. <laughs> it's back, but it's scary. It's back, but it's scary, people. Thank you, Paul, for, for the super chat. <laughs> Hi, Mark, how are you? Gary, how you doing? Fox of Magic Smoke, yeah. You look lovely in black, do you, Harvey? <laughs> We're just catching up with the chat. 24-hour live stream. It would be to try and put that back together, George. And it would, to be honest, I couldn't put that. I could not put that back in in the. Um, in the Volve tester live, to be honest, that would just blow my mind. It was bad enough taking it out live, trying to work out how to wire it up originally. A few boxes of cider invested there, I think. Yeah, it um, it was well into three figures. That um, it must have been a hell of a lot of work to rewind all that lot. Yeah, it must have been a hell of a lot of work. So Ed's done a great job on that for me. Yeah. Anyway, let's um let's put that very, very gently back in the box. And um I'll I'll peruse that. Carefully peruse that over the next few days. <laughs> right. Kits then, how are we doing? Got an hour, we've got an hour, right, okay. The kits. And there is there is a wobbler for more, more crunchies. <laughs> the wobbler is in the background there, look, George, because I, I have had that out to, um, been using that to align the R707. Hi, Morgan, how are you? Few boxes of cider, yeah. There's a, there's a few boxes of cider going to go missing after I paid for that lot. Well, I won't be able to have. <laughs> it's a severe lack of cider at the moment. So put the prices back up. Right. So the kits. Kits. I've got two kits to give away. I'm going to keep the little uh, calculator kit. Um, this radio kit is much more to it than I initially thought. So 
so thanks to Alan for pointing that out. And we've got these two to give away. So this is the little, um, like, really tiny FM radio kit. Did I say hello to you, Theo? I can't remember. Apologies if I haven't, but hello, Theo. No, no, that way. There we go. So this is a little radio kit. It does um, 76 to 108 mags, which has got the little surface mount IC on it. So again, what, what I said on this was, um, if you want me to put the IC on it for you, I will. If you've not got anything to do surface mount stuff with. Um, or if you rather do it yourself, then I'll send it. So whoever wins it, you get the option to either have the surface mount IC put on or run, put it on themselves. That was, that was the idea with that one. And this is the little heart kit. That's the little heart kit. So I'm going to give them away as one one giveaway. So someone will get both of those. So what are we going to do? <sighs> Hi, Elvis. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, thanks, Mike. Brilliant stuff, mate. Thank you very much. More crunchies. I need more crunchies. I'm on the old uh, Corporation Pop today. Mrs. Cruncher picked me up a bottle of wine last night, so I had, had some wine last night. Um, so, yeah, what are we going to do? What are we going to call this? So... Try to type it in on here now. So we want um Okay. There you go. So if you want a chance to win those two kits to build yourself, then um, you need to put the keyword kits in the disc in the in the comments section of this video. Do it all lowercase. Um, I think if you mess about with upper and lowercase, it might not pick it up on the software. I'm not sure. So uh, you need to put it in the um, in the comments section of this video once it's uploaded. I don't think you can do it quite yet. Can you? I, I'm not. I'm not 100% sure. I'm not 100% sure. Don't confuse everybody, people, please. It's just the keyword is kits and put it in the comments section of this video if you would. I've got it lowercase, Ron. You can put it uppercase if you want, but as I say, not in the chat here. Don't put it in the chat here because that won't get picked up. It's got to be in the comments section of the video when it's uploaded. You got that. So I'll leave it on screen for a little bit longer for, for those that don't really understand. So you've got to put it in the comments of this video. So I'll leave that up and um, yeah, don't forget to like the video. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe because this is really a subscriber giveaway. If you're not subscribed, then I might um, might take it away from you. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and give the video the thumbs up. 
So you need to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and write the keyword kits in the comments section of this video when it's uploaded. So let me just find um, that email. Download that. Starting Microsoft Word. I didn't know I had Word. If I have, it's taking forever. Here we go. I don't navigation. Microsoft is doing some weird stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Lovely. Great. Get off. Got it. Yeah. Go away, Microsoft. So this is the kit um, that I'm going to build. That's the plan anyway. Uh, what have we got here? Let's get rid of me. Get rid of the title. So this is this is not the kit that we're going to give away. This is uh, what I'm going to attempt to build, shall we say. Now, Alan has very kindly given me these instructions. So thank you very much, Alan, if you're watching. So you notice the words odd and difficult kit and um, having read through Alan's email, I can see why now. This basically goes through all the bits and pieces that we've got. And uh, this has come from Louis, Louis Gao. Lou Gao, I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Lou Goff. So it's based around a CD2003 GP, which is an integrated AM FM radio IC. All of its AM capabilities are not used in this design, which is a bit of a shame. Yeah, true, but some um, is just FM only. So it's got a ceramic filter, 10.7. Uh, there's pictures of the PCBs, which we've got. that's the schematic for it well it's got yeah that's a schematic for it that's the pcb so some some info on the actual kit itself look lacks any instructions how to put it together and you've got to work out what to do from the silk screen in so we decided to make the lcd first which was a big mistake as it means made the chip on board module more difficult to solder so uh, that's a good point not to do the L lcd first So to assemble the LCD, so if you look at an angle on, on the LCD panel, you'll, you'll notice that you can just about make out some little tiny, very faint stripes on it. And um, you've got this stamping tool thing as well, which is a little bit um, of a strange device.
So this, this is an important part that um, Alan has pointed out. Apparently, you've got to use that T-bar with the silicone insert in, the, in an actual soldering iron. Um, I don't even think I've got one of those type soldering irons, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do there. I know the sort of it means. It means the ones that Sean has got with the um, screw on the side that you take the, the bit out and you put a new bit in. It's that type of soldering iron. So the stamping tool is supposed to be heated, apparently. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that. Let's get back onto my um, desktop a minute. It's opened it twice, that's why. Uh, I've, I've actually opened it multiple times I got impatient and, and did a, a mass clicking on it <laughs> so um, yeah, there's apparently there's a video out, out here that he's given me a link to Don't know how well this will run with everything else running in the background. So we'll see if it'll run, see if it messes up the audio again. Hopefully it doesn't. Yeah, it's not loading very well, is it? the audio out of this so it looks like it's just painting isopropyl on this this is this is not this kit but this shows this tool in use so there's an lcd screen you can just see the little stripes on it and we've got these little plastic things in the kit so this is the tool look so that's actually in a soldering iron So, yeah. Anybody aware of that then? Hopefully you could see that then. And I wasn't still on my screen, was I? No. Okay. And he's also uh, UK, UK CB radio servicing has assembled these kits including the one that I've got, and he's given me some links to that. So thank you, Alan. And apparently searching YouTube for the kit will give you at least four videos showing the errors people made by jumping into the unknown and not taking research. So there. Looks like I've got my work cut out on that one, really. <laughs> It just uh case would look good sprayed black. I think I have got a black case on this one. Has Victor won it already, has he? <laughs> oh, yeah. Brett's already won. Brett's radio still up in the loft, ready to go, Brett. Attempt, yeah. It does seem that it's going to be a bit tricky, this one, Doug. Yeah. Yeah, that's certainly right there, Ron.
You've got to stay with the program, Benji. You can't keep jumping in and out, mate. You're going to get totally confused. I get confused enough as it is. So these have been sent in by Derek, very kindly. So let's get those two out there. So we're all okay on how to win those. And I think we'll do the draw next Thursday. So we'll give it a week to run. So we won't do the um, this kit. Should we make a start on the radio kit? Or do I do some research on that first? I've got probably got to research that first. And Paul, Paul has built one of these recently. So we'll probably leave that one to a bit later. Should we do the heart one now? We've got 45 minutes. <laughs> we could either make a start on the radio one, uh, although I haven't I haven't researched it properly yet. But I can show you. Let's have a look at this little tool, shall we? Let's have a look at this little tool that um, apparently you're supposed to put in a soldering iron. I don't think this would go in in any of my irons. So here's our little strips. I don't know why we've got so many strips. There's only only one to mount, really, isn't there? I think they've given us lots of them in case we cock them up, I expect. <laughs> but yeah, this is this little tool. So that goes in there like that. This... um. It sits in there. Like that. And then you put this use it as a sort of soldering iron in a soldering iron i don't think it certainly ain't going to go in there is it unless it'll go inside no because mine's got a solid piece no that ain't gonna work so another sort of soldering irony irony means it's one of the ones like the the uh, old old style soldering irons that have got a screw in the side, and this piece goes into the soldering iron and gets this brass really hot. But I mean, if this is silicone, surely that would insulate it. Or are we saying that the silicone's going to get really hot, and then you use that to press down? So I'm assuming that um. That main IC goes there, and then you've got to put these strips, I would have thought. Got to line up there and get pressed down, probably that way round. Although, no, it would be that way, wouldn't it? So you've got to sort of get them that way round. <laughs> I'm in the wrong, wrong part of the camera, really, am I? And then this this tool is used to thermally seal them. I, I don't know. It's weird. I will have to walk, look at the. Um, I don't know how I'm going to actually get that in an iron. Do, do I have to buy? I've got to buy one of them cheap, like Hilka type irons, am I? We've certainly got a lot of these strips, and I'm sure it's only one. What do we the LED? LCD even. See, it's only got the one strip on it. So, okay, yeah, so I'd have to attach. So, strip has somehow got a bend in between there. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. You need a pace iron for the adapter. <laughs> pace. 
Hey, Soren. It would go in there, cool, but um, I don't think it's going to make contact somehow, do you? <laughs> yes, I don't think it'll make contact properly. It'll probably go in there, but you know the sort I mean. You know the sort I mean, Paul. <laughs> yeah, no. That's not going to happen, is it? So yeah, I need one of those older type soldering irons that um, takes the bits that you just put a screwdriver and tighten it up in the bottom in order to heat that up. I think I only need one of these strips, but they've given us like half a dozen here. But yeah, that's bizarre. Well, how the hell are you supposed to know that without the instructions? I would have never known if Alan had not said anything. I would have been... I'd just stuck it down, I think. So yeah, you, you can't see it, but I can clearly see there that there is um, some contacts. I'm assuming they match up. Yeah, that is tricky as hell, that. So basically you've got to, got to attach that to there, I'd think, first. And then that sits on the on there. And then you attach it to there. Mental. Crazy. Oh, I don't, it doesn't mention that thing, I don't think, in here anywhere. No. I don't think we'll start that today, do you? Or shall we start this board? What do you want to do, people? Which one should we which one should we start? Should we start the little heart one or should we make a start on the radio one and just do it over a few live streams? Let's get your thoughts on that. Because you're the viewer, not me. Good luck. Go for it, Mike says. Flamethrower. Other side, Graham. What do you mean, Derek? Other side. Part one, less faffin. Do the calculator. Art is a quickie. We've only got just over half an hour, so I think we'll play with the art, shall we? Should we see if we can get the heart underway? I can't say we'll get it finished, but we might um we got more of a chance of that, haven't we? So yeah, I'm going to need to do a bit of research on that one. That's going to be an interesting kit to build. So let's get the heart out. And this is one of the ones that we're going to give away. It's not this particular one we're going to give away, but we are going to give the same one away. I think Derek did say we could mess about with um, different coloured LEDs with this one as well, but I've only got white here anyway, so uh, I'm not going to benefit from different coloured LEDs, because the only ones I've got are the white ones. Okay, so I think someone will tell me if I'm wrong here, but um, where are we looking at? Where's, where's my thing? So I need to be down near the two, so I need to be down about there and over about there so LEDs one leg is longer than the other and I'm sure that the um, longer leg is is the positive or the is it the cathode that's got a flat on them yeah I think I'm, I think I'm right there So yeah, they got to go in like that. So it's always best practice to um, put the smaller components in first. So it looks like the resistors, but it looks like all the resistors are the same. Uh, we've got two different ones, typical, isn't it?
Okay. So that's a bit crafty. Um, oh, here we go. So we've got two resistors going in there. I think I'll go underneath the I see then. Hmm, how's that going to work then? I suppose I've got to lay these down, am I? I would have to sort of lay down to fit underneath. That's a bit, um... Unusual, so the... That's in there as well. All this sits on top. Okay. So it looks like that's that needs to be the last thing I put in. So let's fire the soldering iron up then. Let's look at what tip we got in. Yeah, that should do. Actually, might be a bit overkill. So let's get some resistor in then, shall we? Should we just put them all in and then solder them in one big hit? Probably best, isn't it? We'll try and do them all the same way round. I remember I'm down here. That's a lot of resistors. I'll do them all the same way around. I'll use put the gold band at the top. The green stripe down the bottom. So these are all the resistors to control the voltage going to the LED. Assume it drops it down or limits the current. Sean, how you doing, mate? <laughs> hey, been delivering cake. <laughs> it's better been good to get out on the bike, Sean, isn't it? Blow, blow the wind out a bit. Yeah, so did you all enjoy the Vectrex the other day? Still have a chance to have another play with that yet, but I will do before it goes back. So James will be claiming it back fairly soon. It's looking neat, isn't it? <laughs> I keep forgetting I've got to be here, really. Let me just get the camera up a little bit because I'm, I'm sort of working back here a, a bit more. A bit of glare from the light.
It's a lot of resistors. I might only get around to soldering the resistors in today. We'll see. These are good fun, these kits. If you're stuck for something to do and just want something to pass the time of day, these um these are very entertaining. I'm sort of going through it a bit quicker than I probably would normally. So yeah, I think I'm going to need to do a, a bit of a reading up before I attempt that other radio. And I might, I don't think I've got one of those type soldering irons here anywhere. But um, a lot of the sort of like budget tool places do them. I think they're the same as some of the older Weller irons. Like knitting this, isn't it? <laughs> or crochet, cross stitch. <laughs> Been tempted to get the um, get the sewing machine out of the loft. I got one of Mum's sewing machines here that um, I got when she uh, sadly passed away. I was going to dig that out and have a look at making some of these masks, perhaps. Not that that's going to be a live stream. <laughs> Radio Cruncher sewing bee lessons. It uh, sounds like we're all going to be wearing masks at some stage if we're going on public transport or in confined spaces with other people. Seems it's crazy. It's a different world, isn't it? It's um, bizarre. Never, never known anything like it personally. That, uh, unfortunately, is a sign of the times. There's obviously been pandemics in the past, but um, not in my lifetime. So I'm still going. I'm still, I'm still resistoring. <laughs> Steel resistor, and I'm over this side now. Yeah, it's going to start. It's going to start getting difficult. So I'm going to need to solder these first, I think, before I go any further. <laughs> the overhead camera be easier for you to see what I'm doing then. Working in my own mess again as usual. There's my overhead camera. There he is. Cool. Miles away. I'll do. I think I can work there with that camera in the way. There we go. Yeah, you can see that. You can see that. So cheap Chinese soldering iron. Is that what I need, George? <laughs> so I've got a bit of uh, solder that I've already uh, pulled off. So I'm just going to go and uh, solder these. It's a new board, so I shouldn't really need anything too much, sort of flux wise.
I might just run over them with a bit of flux in a minute. Got a bridge there, look. See that? Another bridge. Single sided board, not double sided, so I don't need to go mental on it. I think it's double sided board, but it's not. Is that a bit of trace there? This iron is great, it just doesn't um doesn't ever run out of heat. Okay. That's the first one's done. Let's have a quick look at those, make sure we've got no bridges. Make all the soldiers taken nicely. Yeah, they're nice, they're good, they're good. Let's just cut all those off then. That'll give me room to um, do the other ones. Well, my stomach's making a racket. That's because I've been eating those sugar-free sweets again. <laughs> they don't agree with me. I don't know why I keep eating them, really. All right. A little tiny... I think it's just... um byproducts of the manufacturer, but I don't know if you can see. Just here, there's like a little tiny bit of... Oh, that's oh, it's an overspill. Yeah, there we go. Well, the manufacturing process. So that might have, might have caused a short of that. Let's just shorten up some of these legs a little bit, bit more. Left some of them a little bit long. I don't know. I'm just being fussy again, am I? Yeah, that's the first lot in. Nice and neat. Let's do the rest then. Let's crack on. 20 minutes to finish it. No pressure. <laughs> Cheers, Paul. Thanks for reminding me. I don't know that we'll finish it in 20 minutes. 
There's a lot of components to go in it. A lot of components. So Alan was sort of saying as well that um, you really need to lay all your components out and make sure you've got everything first before you start. Um, I'm fairly lucky in that if I've got anything missing here, I can probably put my hands on replacements fairly easily, although I certainly wouldn't. <laughs> if I was missing that IC, I wouldn't have it. And... Um, Things like the crystal, I wouldn't have. But most of the, what they call the passive components I've got here. So that'll be the resistors, capacitors, that sort of thing. Yes, yeah, worth laying it all out first just to make 100% sure you've got everything. Good practice. So whoever wins this kit, hopefully uh, you'll learn from my mistakes. Because <laughs> I'm sure I'll make some. I usually do. <laughs> they usually goggle things off me. Head. They just make my head sweat. I don't know. Once I've got them on, I seem to keep them on and just keep dropping them down as I need them. I'm a bit scared about putting that um, transformer back in, but um, I'm sure a lot of you will be on hand if I get stuck with it. Got anyone else jumped in? Mr. Shortwave? Yes, they do, driver. Yes, they do have uh, laxative effects. This is the issue. That's why my stomach's rumbling at the moment. And uh, they have laxative effects if you eat them in large quantities. So uh, try not to eat too many of them. That's the idea. So if anybody wants to buy any of these kits themselves, they can. They're easily ava they're available on, I think, Amazon and eBay. AliExpress, I think, was it George? Or someone was saying that, that, that they got loads of kits on AliExpress. So you've got to wait for them to come from China. So the the sort of rule of thumb with these kits is you're always supposed to install the smallest bits first because uh, it just makes it easier trying to put them in with larger components in the way can be a bit of a pain. Always put the smallest in first and work your way up through. I want to say smallest, probably closest to the board first. Right, that's the next row ready to go, nice and straight. Let's go. Let's get soldering. You don't actually need a lot of solder on these. I, I do tend to put a bit too much solder on these things sometimes. See, the less solder you've got, the neater it is. Turn it around.
That's those. Let's just take the um, legs off of them. Someone's just turned the dog. There we are. Right. Looking good. Get in there, look. We'll get in there. Rid of some of these solder legs. To get into everything else. A little pot that I keep all my cut off solder legs in because they do come in useful for bridges and other bits and pieces links right so we've got some more 510s to go in i think they've probably given us too many 510s by the looks of it <laughs> i think they've just filled off a random amount of them I'm going to have some spare 510s, possibly. Yeah, I've got quite a few spare 510s. Right, let's just have a look at the board, make sure there's no other 510s that I can see that got to go in. So we've got a 10k to go in there. So we've got a link that's got to go in across there. Okay, so 10k is going to be this. Again, they've given us two, so we've got loads spare. I mean, look at... Look at all the spare resistors I've got. <laughs> Unless I'm seeing something wrong and there's loads got to go on the other side, I don't know. It seems strange that they've printed all this side of the board as well and put pads on. I don't know why that is, because nothing goes in, in that. Bizarre. So assuming this is 10k. A uh, brown, black, orange. I'm sure you're all shouting at me that that is 10k, but let's just double check. Brown. Black. Orange. 10k. Where are we? That way? Ten thousand ten k. So we only need one of those, but they've given us two. Just for good measure, it is better to be fair to have more than than less. And these are like pennies. These little resistors. Put that one in. So let's solder that then, and that'll be our, our resistors all done then.
Just like so. There we go. <sighs> Ten minutes. You're off, Mike, are you? You're due to for Mrs. Demon. Catch you soon, mate. Cheers for now, Mike. Okay, so that's all the resistors done as far as I can see. So we've got two little ceramic caps, 22p, that's marked 22, so that's got to be one of them. I think possibly that's got to lie down a little bit, but I can bend that over afterwards if need be. Twenty two, that's a twenty two as well. We've got our electrolytic. Let's just bend that one over a bit neater. One as well. Ooh, seven minutes, Paul. We've got our little crystal. Let's put that one in last. Let's do these two first. Any more caps on there anywhere? Nope. Good. Let's just cut the legs off those. Okay. That's those bits on. So they'll they'll bend over if necessary if they get in the way of the IC. This is very unusual. So what have I done with the little crystal now? There he is. So again, the crystal's not polarized. The electrolytic's polarized, so you need to make sure you get that the right way around. And microfarads at 25 volts. So this probably don't want to bend the pins on this. So what I'm gonna try and do is solder one. Just to tack it in place. Again, you don't really want to dwell too much on a crystal because you can melt the um, contact inside. The crystal done. Right, what else have we got? So we've got our 5 volt connection, which will be that one. There, switch. So I think probably the next thing to put on is this. Well, it's usually got just one pin that doesn't want to go in straight. Yeah, 
Yeah, so they are going to have to bend down a little bit, those two caps. So again, I'm just going to tack that in two corners. Get all made a pig zero of that, but it is tacked. It's because there's no flux on it, that's why. Let's put a little bit of flux on there. Right, let's go and uh, flow these. Three minutes. I'm not going to get it done, am I? I'm not going to get it done. We'll get this done. This thing going to take me three minutes to do these. Get the solder on to get back up to temperature. Promise Mrs. Cruncher I'd be finished at half five today, so. Let's put a bit of flux on that blobby connection that I did there. Let's take that off. On the other side. We are. So I'll leave putting the IC in till last. One thing to make sure you do if you do this kit is get that some um, little semicircle there lined up with the one on the screen print and that also lines up with a little cutout on the IC itself on this side. So make sure all three of those are the same and you won't go wrong. So that's that should clear now anyway. That's as far as we're gonna get. That is as far as we're gonna get. That is going to be it for today. I'm going to have to um, carry on with that one on Sunday and I get it finished for you. As I say, we'll do the draw for that and the other kit. Um, I've done done quite a lot of that. Actually, there's quite a few components I've put in there. Obviously, I've got a bag full of um, LCDs to put in it yet. I don't know how many is in there, but it um, looks like there's uh, 25, 28... 32, 32 of those to solder in yet. <laughs> Switch, power, socket, and that's it. So we weren't far off, but didn't quite get there in time. Bruce Forsyth stuff. What are we saying? It's a no chance, Sean. I think I'll pull it off. Not quite, mate. Not quite, people. Not quite. Three minutes on all non essential to clear the tower. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting ready for liftoff. <laughs> so there you go. As I say, if you want to win that, don't forget in in the comments section of this video, write the word kits. Not uh, not here. So there you go. Yeah, there is 32 LEDs to go in there yet. Yeah? <laughs>
Right, people. I hope we've enjoyed it today. As I say, it's uh, it seems to have been really quick, doesn't it? I mean, it's only only a, an hour less, but uh, I've been waffling again. Am I really a, a sort of that um, transformer dropping in was was unexpected? So I've got to got to get that done. Um, I don't know when I'm going to do that. I'm just going to have to sit there and study that for a week, I think, before I even start to tackle that. So. There we are. Join me on Sunday and we'll get this little heart kit finished. Um, not sure what I'm going to do Sunday yet. So again, I might um, might mix it up. You never know. And Derek, thanks again for sending these in. I hope you've enjoyed watching me uh, struggling with it. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to see the Transformer. And yeah, that shortwave channel, um, I would suggest... Maybe tonight, I don't know what their program schedule is, but maybe in the evenings you're more likely to pick it up when the noise level goes down. So yeah, have a search out for that. Uh, did They were playing some really good music earlier, but it's disappeared again now. I, I did receive it okay earlier on, on all of my radios. So, there we go, people. That's all for now. Hope you've enjoyed that. You've had a bit of a get-together and a, a chat. Thanks again for the super chats, everybody that's put them in. And obviously, thanks to my moderators as well. And uh, I'll catch you all on Sunday, if not uh, before. You never know when I'm going to pop up to you, really. <laughs> anyway, cheers for now, everybody. Have a good evening and um, see you all on Sunday. Bye for now.